If you are interested in the perfect Hoya for your specific personality, do not miss this video, plant friends. Blue and Grow YouTube Show. Oh, I'm excited about this video, <laughs> plant friends. I'm excited about this whole podcast video collaboration. So, I recently was lucky enough to interview Doug Chamberlain of Vermont Hoyas for a Hoya 101 episode for the Bloom Girl Radio podcast. Doug is a titan of the Hoya Amer industry. I mean, I think he probably has the widest collection of Hoyas in the United States, if not like top collections. In the podcast interview, this kind of second half of the podcast interview, I asked Doug to play matchmaker for me. And I gave him a bunch of different types of personalities and levels of plant parent and asked him to pair the perfect Hoya for them. So we talked about the best plant, the best Hoyas for beginners, the best Hoyas for advanced plant parents, rarer types of Hoyas for people who already have a lot of Hoyas. And then I gave him the five personalities from the Bloom and Grow plant parent personality quiz, link in the bio if you haven't taken it yet, and asked him to pair the perfect Hoya with those personalities. It was a really interesting conversation and Doug sent me photos of almost every Hoya we talked about. So I'm gonna share a portion of the podcast episode with the photos spliced on top of the audio so you can actually see what he's talking about and if you're interested maybe try and source one for yourself and stay tuned till the end of the episode where i'm going to show you my favorite hoya in my collection and why before we dive into this super informative episode on hoyas please be a plant friend and like this video and subscribe for more fun planty content okay let's do it five of the easiest Hoyas to care for in general. So ones that aren't too precious that yeah. if I have some bright and direct light, I will hopefully not kill. Okay. We have to start with your Carnosas, which are like the most popular Hoya. Yes. That was your grandmother's Hoya, basically. It's been around for years. They were really big in the 60s and 70s and they fell out of favor, but they've come back big time. There's a lot of uh, variegated varieties now. There's a Crimson Queen and a Crimson Princess and a lot of different types. There's even one called Grey Ghost now which is like a almost silver leaf Hoya that they developed somehow. I don't know exactly how they did it, but those are pretty much foolproof Hoyas that will do well anywhere. And that's a Hoya that really does appreciate being on the drier side before you water it again. After that, I would go with a Pubicalyx, which is, it's kind of similar to Carnosa in a way, except they have much longer elongated leaves. They have silver flex. They come in all kinds of shades of purples and pinks, the flowers, and to almost black. So Pubicalyx is a, really a fail-proof Hoya. It's, it's a great, great plant. And they have colorful blooms, and they can just get covered in them. They're just lovely. I think that's the fun part about Hoyas, too, is there's the color variety. It's pretty amazing. It's truly amazing. Yeah, more so than our tropical foliage plants. The only color that really isn't represented well in Hoya flowers is blue. They're just not really a blue flower, but most of the other colors are represented in, in Hoyas. Mm -hmm. The next Hoya I would pick as a foolproof Hoya. It has a shrubby growth habitat, or it grows shrubby. It's Cumingiana. Okay, never heard of that one. I always said that if I could only have one Hoya, it would be that one. Wow. It's been one of my longest Hoyas that I've had. I've had many specimens get to six feet high, where I, and I finally had to start them over and get rid of them. But they grow pretty rapidly. They can be shaped to trellises and things. That They have short internodes between the leaves. And they flower fairly early. And they get a spicy, cinnamon-scented flower. So it's quite nice and very easy to grow. So I recommend that one highly. Readily available like on eBay for reasonable prices, unlike what a lot of stuff is going for today. So mm -hmm. that's a good one. Everyone ought to have a Lacanosa. Okay. That's definitely a hanging plant. Can't be grown in any other kind of way. They have small leaves, kind of pointed. They get peduncles with about 15 to 20 little tiny white flowers on them, and they're very perfumed. So if you have a number of those open, your whole room will smell like perfume. It's oh, quite how beautiful. Cool. It's very, very nice. And then the last beginner plant, they just changed the name. It used to be called DS70, but it's now species AFF. Bertontonia, and it's a great Hoya. I always have this plant. It's very easy to grow, and it will flower a lot even through the winter time. 
it's another hanging basket type Hoya and it has little red flowers that smell of caramel. <gasps> it's very nice. Some people think it smelled of like warm butter or caramel, but I have them in the bathroom and the whole bathroom will smell of caramel. It's very nice. Oh my God. I love it. So what about for our more advanced plant parents who have these basic plants? They probably already know how to trellis a Hoya. What are some more rare but successful Hoyas that like the 2.0 level Hoya people could try? Yeah, that's great. It, these The next ones I'm going to give you is perfect for that. They're not especially difficult at all. And a lot of people haven't heard of them. And I love them. I was just walking around the house the other day looking at my plants. And, and it's, yeah, these are definite must. Angle Rihanna Vietnam. I love this plant. It's a cascading hanging plant. It's the best way to describe it. It's just absolutely beautiful. It has really tiny leaves. They're fatter and thicker than linearis, but they're very small and they shoot out of the pot. They come out up and many, many stalks will come out of the base and it just like drapes over and they get white flowers with red coronas, red centers. And it's a lovely plant and most people don't have it. So I highly recommend that that plant. Okay. It's not going to be easy to find though, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. if you do, you have to pick it up. The other one is polystachia. I've had this plant now for probably 12, 13 years. It's a fantastic plant. It gets large scallop leaves. Like they can get eight inches long by six inches wide with deep scallops, highly glossy, just an outstanding specimen. It's not grown for the flowers, which are very nondescript. It's grown for those leaves. It's just fantastic. Love that plant a lot. The other one is AFF Clemensiorum. This is one that I got from the Little Nursery in Australia quite a few years ago when they were still selling. And this is a really cool plant. It gets some of the coolest leaves in the plant world. They're 10 to 12 inches long, like daggers, very, very pointed. And they have raised venation across the whole thing. That It would be perfect like if you could only read Braille, just touching the leaves would give you an incredible sensation because it's like Braille. It's all raised. And they're foot long leaves, 12 yes. inches? Yes. Whoa, and they how big is this look, plant? Well, the thing is, it's not an easy, quick grower. I might grow three, four leaves a year. Okay. It doesn't grow quickly, but it's a really, really cool way. It looks Jurassic. It doesn't look like it's anything from the world today that we know. So I highly recommend that. And I'll have to send you a photo of that. So. Oh, absolutely. You can see what it is. Okay, so we've got some 1.0, 101 Hoyas, two, 201 Hoyas. Then I was thinking, I've got these five plant parent personalities, and I was wondering if you could pair a Hoya for each personality. Yes, so I'd love to. We've got the mindful plant parent. So this is someone who likes to check in with their plants every day, maybe uses plants for mindfulness, likes to engage in them. So what would you suggest for that? I've got one that will keep them mindful for a long time. <laughs> I suggest Hoya Undulata. Okay. That Hoya there will, you can pamper it all day long. Ideally, you're going to have a room that's always at 75 degrees and you're going to have that plant sitting on a heat mat and you're going to have it under a clear cloak so that it holds the humidity in. And then you're going to pamper it and then you're going to spend days just deciding, should I water this plant or should I not? And <laughs> If you make one little mistake, you're going to lose it. I love it. That's going to keep you busy for a long time. That's my best suggestion for the person who wants to spend a lot of time thinking about their plant. Okay. I love it. And then what about the low key plant parent who maybe travels, maybe has little kids, doesn't really have a lot of time to like attend to their plant, but really likes having plants in the home. What would you suggest for that? I've got the perfect Hoya for that person. And it almost made my list of the five easiest Hoyas to grow. It really is that easy. It's Hoya obovada. I really okay. like that plant. It's got beautiful, almost round leaves, succulent, two and a half to four inches in size. It flowers profusely in the spring. I had a lovely uh, specimen of this and then I no longer had room and I gave it away. And it ended up in a hairdresser's shop on Main Street in Burlington here. 
in Vermont. And still, when I walk by this today, five years later, that plant, and believe me, they don't give it any special care at all. That plant still looks really good, having never been transplanted or anything, just sitting there five years later. And it still flowers. So that's a perfect plant for the low-key plant parent. Oh, I love that. Now, the curious collector plant parent, I think any of the three you gave us for the advanced 201 would work. Someone who wants to really try something special. Do you have anything else you would suggest for them? Yeah, I've got another one. It's called Amicabilis, Hoya Amicabilis. And this is a fairly new introduction. And I like it because it was actually discovered on social media. That's how it got its name. The name comes from uh, Amicable, friendly. People were posting photos of this plant between themselves on Facebook, I think. And a botanist noticed it and discovered it as a new Hoya that had never been seen by the world. So yeah, that's how it got its name. It's really cool. It gets these little yellow bell-shaped flowers. So yeah, for the curious plant collector, that's my suggestion. There's a lot of other ones, but that's my one suggestion. Oh, I love that. Next up is the design-based plant parent. So this is someone who loves the aesthetic of plants, something with a special structure or a specially patterned leaf. So compacta is definitely up there. What else would you suggest? I would suggest any of the Finlay Zoni type Hoyas. And those are Hoyas that there's a number of them that fall into this category. They're called the Finlay Zoni type Hoya because Hoya Finlay Zoni is similar to all these other ones like Callistophylla, Species Gundagatig, species mainam. There's a lot of them. They have very pronounced veination that are on light and dark backgrounds. So the leaves that have vein, and I mean, they're really beautiful in all kinds of geometric shape. So a large specimen of that can be really striking. And they're very hot in the Hoya world right now. All Hoyas are hot in the Hoya world right now. I know, right? Hoyas are just hot right now. They're hot everywhere. Apparently, it's the number one plant search word in the world right now. I just found that out, too. So it's incredible. Yeah. So any of those would be great. It's striking and different. Very different. I love that. And then my other personality is the urban farmer. But I'm pretty sure, are any Hoyas edible? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's going to be no. tough. I've sampled some of the nectar, which is very sweet out of Hoya, but from everything I gather online, the, the latex sap is very toxic. It's actually a toxic plant. Yeah, it's a toxic plant. It would not do to eat it. If you want to be an urban farmer and grow a plant just to for the cut flowers, so I recommend Hoya imperialis, which I put those in vases and they've held up very nicely and look quite beautiful for up to a week. So, Oh, wow. So why you can't eat it? Maybe to a different aspect of Hoyas that mindful parents or farmers might like is the scent. I mean, the scent varies so much. So what are some good flowers that have good scents that are easily like available to us to pick up? Well, the easiest that are available, the easiest to find would be the two that I've already mentioned, Lacanosa and okay. that AFF Bertentonia. Okay. Those you can find pretty much anywhere and they have beautiful scents. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to search a little harder and look on eBay, the Calicina, it has a intoxicating, strong perfume that will fill a whole house actually with beautiful perfume scent. And any of the like these, they're called verticulata type Hoyas. I hope that was interesting, plant friends. I had no idea of most of these Hoyas and we're so lucky that Doug was able to provide us with those photos. So check them out and let me know in the comments which Hoyas that you might have in your collection, why you care for them, why you love them, because I was not sold on Hoyas at all. I'm still not really. I have two in my collection right now. So I'm very curious. I feel like with Hoyas, you either like don't have them or you have them and you like really love them. So with that, I wanted to show you my little Hoya that I freaking love. Um, It's a Hoya Compacta Variegata and uh, I call it the tortellini plant. And the reason why I love it so much is obviously it's gorgeous structure. I mean, I've never seen a plant that looks like a freaking tortellini. It's so cute. I also love that the new growth is pink. It's so pretty. But I just wanted to tell you the cute little story behind this plant. 
I was on the national tour of Cats the Musical last year for all of 2019, and when I was in Chicago, I had a listener of the podcast actually come to Cats, and he came to the stage door, and he gave me this, and he hand-painted the pot with a little monstera leaf on it, and this is a cutting of his really epic plant. So... It was a really sweet moment and it was I was feeling really lonely on tour in that moment and it was just really nice to have a member of our community come out and support me that way. And this plant has freaking I think quadrupled in size, if not definitely tripled. It was maybe this big when I got it, and it has grown prolifically. Um and whenever I look at it, I think of him and I think of our whole community. Um and it just really brings a smile to my face. So let me know your favorite Hoya in the comments. And until next time, plant friends, do, keep do, blooming do, and keep growing. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do,